Now I'll say, welcome everyone. I thought we would start off on this MeherbabaTravels.com page, which has some good information about Dr. Ghani. Very interesting fellow and a close, close friend of Baba's. They were um, friends from childhood because their families lived close together. They were just a few doors away and they had a very interesting relationship. So there he is. You can see he was born in 1894. And he died in August 1951. I believe that date is wrong, but I could be wrong too. I believe it was actually August 20th that he died. Well, it, say, it states it several times as August 7th in, in the calendar that comes out of uh, Florida. Oh, for years it? she's been, yeah, oh, okay. dating that August 7th. Okay, well, anyway, we're going to read in, Yeah, we're going to read It was in the, the new life he yeah. died. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, towards the end of the new life. And he had a very important role to play for Baba, as we'll see. <laughs> but Baba's nickname for him, his favorite nickname was Big Head. That's how he referred to him, Big Head. And you can't see it very well in that picture. I, I, yeah. You can see it better there. There he is. Oops. There he is. Right next to Baba. Look how skinny Baba is in that picture. There he is next to Baba, later years. Hmm. Oh, 1932. So this <laughs> is in New York. So he, and oh, Hudson. Yeah, That's he Carmen. accompanied Baba on that trip after being away from him for a while. And there's a montage. There he is, which he's, this is how he spent most of his time while he was at the ashram was that, Bob, he that's sitting with Bob. That's in that. That's in that book. The answer. He's the one that fires the question. Mm, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And this is the picture, which I think shows his big head, <laughs> uh, and that's in the book. So let's go to the book. <clears throat> Where did I put it? So there it is. Can you see it okay? It's all blue. It's all blue? You have it all highlighted. It's harder to see than if it were just... Hmm. Yeah, I don't have it highlighted. Let me reshare just from that. Let me do another share. There we go. How's that? And now it shows a page of the book yeah so this is this is the pdf right so this is how it begins with the title page eric tepperman was the editor and it's uh, a reproduction of the original book many years with meher baba So I don't think we need to read that. Do you want me to read this or? That's the origin. The book was from Mayher, Mayher Era Publications. So here we are in the forward. I'll start reading. Hmm. 20 Years with Mayher Baba by Dr. A.G. Munsif has first appeared in a series of articles in Mayher Baba Journal, 1938 to 42, in its issues commencing from 1940. Obviously, the period covered was from 20 to 40, 1920 to 1940, truly a very important phase of Mayor Baba's life and work in his avataric mission. As the process of bringing down his consciousness, divinized by a kiss from the lips of Hazrat Babajan, in January 1914, 
to the gross level of integrated and creative activities for the redemption of mankind was nearing the point of com completion, December 1921. Diane, would you mute just to, while I'm reading? Thanks. Uh, to the gross level of integrated and creative activities for the redemption of mankind was nearing the point of com completion, 1921, at the hands of Upasni Maharaj. We find him drawn to places spiritually prepared for the inauguration of his work and persons destined to render physical service to him. Now, oh, how he enters the hearts of those early associates and admirers from whom the early Mandali group of disciples were drawn and how they were inspired to follow him makes an interesting study in what one may call applied psychology. The attitudes and aspirations of those early associates are well depicted by the author's remark in his introduction. Quote, as a matter of fact, his two gurus, Hazrat Babajan and Sri Upasni Maharaj held the pride of place in the thoughts and discussions of all concerned, and Mayor Baba was looked upon as an exceptionally lucky re recipient of their spiritual grace, whose, whose potential was yet to be determined from the standpoint of individual gain and benefit. Few seem to have followed him leaving everything in the sense Jesus Christ asked men of his time to follow him. Or according to the ancient concept of surrender to a perfect master held in the East. Meher Baba's lovers often meet persons who ask questions on the daily life of Meher Baba and those who lived with him. Whether they sat in Padmasana, Siddhasana, or Sukhasana, whether they meditated or, or concentrated, what mantras he gave, how he initiated his disciples, whether they did any yogasanas, and so on. Reminiscences regarding the author by Pratap Ji Ahir give an interesting reading for those who wish to have an idea of the atmosphere around the avatar, who, it may be remembered, visits this earth once in 700 to 1400 years, according to Mayor Baba which atmosphere has no comparison with similar atmospheres that prevail around saints and sadgurus in their ashrams familiar to most men in the East. The true spiritual concepts Baba had imparted to those who were attracted towards him in the early days, through the medium of games and sports they indulged in, through discussions he encouraged amongst them, through bhajans, kavalis, and ghazals. He inspired them with and through his advices and explanations are easy to grasp and are of lasting value for those who are on the path sincerely seeking enlightenment. Through the training he had given to those who had chosen to follow him in the early days, he seems to have given them a vision of the true spiritual values of life implied in the everyday life of every man in every walk of life. Everyone is potentially divine. The everyday life of every man is advancement towards the goal of life. For this world, he said, has sprung up with the only purpose of unfolding man, his destiny, or his identity, sorry. In order to understand the creation in terms of thought, it has been imagined from ancient times that this world has come into being in answer to a question God asked, who am I? The one and the only answer to that question is, I am God. Thus, everything and everyone in existence is God seeking consciousness experience, God seeking conscious experience of his Godhood. One of the infinite false answers that sprung up between the original question and the only true answer. Each one of us is thus God seeking for himself, hidden under the threefold veil 
gross, subtle, and mental. When the avatar of God descends to earth as man for his work of universal transformation of human consciousness, he brings with him those are who are in his circle. And they, under the veil of vijnana of sanskaras, which the avatar puts on himself and his circle, work in various fields of human activities as princes, philosophers, poets, social, cultural, educational, and religious performers, uh, reformers, political revolutionaries, etc., etc. Rabindranath Tagore in his Gitanjali sings, He whom I enclose with my name is weeping in this dungeon. I am very busy building this wall all around, and as this wall goes up into the sky day by day, I lose sight of my true being in its dark shadow. I take pride in this great wall, and I plaster it with dust and sand, lest a least hole should be left in this name, and for all the care I take, I lose sight of my true being. Meher Baba, through his discourses, messages, sayings, and statements, gives me an opportunity of opening the avenues of his understanding one's ego self, its origin, structure, sustenance, growth, and its spiritual purpose. And in his smile, one finds a glimpse of the beauty and glory of one's true self. His love stimulates the inner being of man to become what in reality he is. Why most men are worried? In spite of great strides, man seems to have made in fields of science and technology, assuring his material prosperity and progress, most men are worried in one way or another, which all the excitements in which they involve in order to forget themselves fail to hide. I have witnessed streams of men and women passing in front of Mayor Baba during his lifetime, each bearing a cross each thought was heavier. I have also seen persons so well placed in life that they were objects of any envy for many others around them, opening up their hearts to him. To each one he said, don't worry, be happy. He used to advise them to love him and leave everything to him. Remember me constantly and wholeheartedly, he used to tell them. The seat of one's ego self is one's mind, a ceaselessly flowing stream of apparently endless desires, which prompts one to think selfishly, to speak selfishly, and to act selfishly. When one endeavors to love Meher Baba constantly and wholeheartedly, one becomes aware of the operations of one mi one's mind, releasing its consciousness, releasing its contents, a choiceless awareness of which set in motion a process of demolish demolishing detachment towards the great wall one has been habituated to build around one's self real self-God, the indweller of every heart. That was an awkward sentence. I'm going to try that again. When one endeavors to love Meher Baba constantly and wholeheartedly, one becomes aware of the operation of one's mind releasing its contents, a choiceless awareness of which set in motion a process of demolishing detachment towards the great wall one has been habituated to build around one's real self-God, the indweller, of every heart. I still don't quite get the grammar on that, but anyway. At the demolishing of this great wall of one's self-ego, one finds happiness he seeks, and which is his birthright. But the process is painful and time-long. The path of love is for the brave. Listen to Tagore again. Obstinate are the trammels, but my heart aches when I try to break them. Freedom is all I want, but to hope for it I feel ashamed. 
I am certain that priceless wealth is in thee, and that thou art my best friend, but I have not the heart to sweep away the tinsel that fills my room. My debts are large, my failures great, my shame secret and heavy. Yet when I come to ask for my good, I quake in fear, lest my prayer be granted. With wishes of blessings from the beloved of all hearts, Avatar Meher Baba, we release this booklet on the auspicious occasion of the 25th anniversary of Meher Baba's Sermon on the Mount of Mahab Mahabaleshwar, J. Baba. K.K. Ramakrishnan wrote that introduction. So here's the preference, pref, yeah, preface to the edition. Shall I read that? First published by the Avatar Mayor Baba Pune Center in 1975, this reprint has tried to remain faithful to the original with only a very few spelling and punctuation changes. Permission from this print reprinting was given by Pratap Ahir and the Avatar Meher Baba Pune Center. Vijay, do you know who uh, Pratap Ahir was? Pratap uh, Ahir is um, uh, presently, Pratap Ahir is uh, uh, connected with Pune Center. So he's still alive? Oh yeah, he's alive. Oh. Every Friday he uh, alternate Friday he comes and he gives a talk actually ah. recently he finished his talk uh, on right. Dr. Jani Dr. Jani yeah so interesting think, yeah thank you so he wrote the first part that we're going to get into in a minute mm -hmm. I'm not going to read uh, all of this because most of it is just technical stuff and uh, there is I love this picture of Dr. Ghani. See the cigarette in his hand? We'll hear more about that. But look at the size of his head. <laughs> Looks like my brother's head. Now, this is this part of the book that we're going to be reading now is written by Pratap Ahir. And this is his account and recollections of Dr. Ghani. So does anyone want to read for a little bit? Give me a break. Uh, you want me to read? Um, sure. Would you read for a while? Okay. Dr. Abdul Ghani Munsif. Dr. Abdul Ghani Munsif can be truly said to be one of those disciples whom fate conspired to link up inextricably with the personality of Meher Baba. Even from early childhood, uh, yeah, the, family, the families of the two concerned lived almost next door to each other for about 15 years in a locality known as Butler Mohalla. Camp Puna and this long neighborhood association ceased with the transfer of Dr. Ghani's father, Munshi Sheikh Muhammad, Military Accounts Department. Oh, I worked uh, in the same department, but he was in the finance. Right? And then to France on field service during the last great war about the same age today as that of Mahabha. Dr. Ghani amongst the Muslim disciples has not only the unique honor of being intimately associated with Mahabha's school and college career, uh, but for the last 20 years or more, he has been directly or indirectly connected with the master's spiritual mission in life. The spiritual entry of Meher Baba into his otherwise humdrum worldly life as a practicing homeopath in Bombay dates back to the year 1920. 
just a few months after his marriage an event which he regrets <laughs> this day <laughs> मेहर बाबा इज अगेंस्ट मैरिड लाइफ बट द सिचुएशन डेवलप डिवाइडेड लॉयल्टीज फॉर डॉक्टर गनी हु वॉज टॉन बिटवीन हिज सेंस ऑफ ड्यूटी टूवर्ड्स हिज बेनिफेक्टर्स एंड डिपेंडेंस एंड हिज एलिजियंस टू द मास्टर who stood there confronting him with the message of a new life for him a message relatively too good to be true and invaluably too rare to be missed it was easy enough for dr gani to give up 1921 his medical career at the behest of the master but it uh, Uh, am i okay reading or yeah uh, yeah keep going oh, yeah it needed a greater experiment for him to learn to appraise and ex- assess the relative values of his responsibilities towards the world master knowing the afford sufficient latitude for individual expression and the reformation or rather the awakening that is sought to be achieved thereby is allowed to develop and grow from within instead of being imposed from without taking into consideration his peculiar circumstances the pressures of mehar baba into the temperamental makeup of the subject he was dealing with according according that the dani tacit consent and even personal advice in the matter of enabling him to make good his sense of responsibility towards those immediately and acutely concerned thank That's you vijay good. thank yeah. you vijay uh would anyone else like to read or should i should i pick up nobody huh okay Thus equipped and blessed 1924 Dr Gunny lost no time in asserting himself in the matter of serving and being useful to the world of his gratitude and sympathy He not only consolidated his economic position to a com- comfortable extent but was even unwittingly drawn into the snare of a public life and its responsibilities in Pune district and Lanavla he was soon involved in social and political activities and in course of time he came to be associated with a good many institutions and societies of a religious and secular nature as also the local municipal councils in recognition of his merit The government of the province appointed him in year 1926 an honorary munsif with a civil jurisdiction over 12 villages including the hill stations of Lanavala and Kandala Pune district. So that's how he gets the title of munsif. A lot of people thought that was his last name, but it's actually an honorary title. and i believe it was a civil ser- servant similar to similar to like a a mayor if i'm not mistaken do you know vj okay. uh not uh, like a mayor but it was like a magistrate uh, magistrate that's it that's it thank you all through this worldly game of imagined or real responsibilities by Dr. Ghani the vigilant eye of the master kept observing him from a distance with subtle hints and warnings conveyed to him from time to time to pull up in time Dr. Ghani himself could not ignore the feeling that the tacit understanding with the master in the matter of being available to him any time called upon to do so was being violated but he could not tear himself away from the vortex of circumstances and activities in which he was seemingly floundering in spite of himself this anomalous position of dr gani 
which was something more than he bargained for, provided great speculation to some of his brothers in faith, Mandali, who, being aware of the master's spiritual interest in him, kept wondering as to when and where it would end. So I thought I would pause here. We'll pick up in a few minutes, but I wanted to show you this letter, actually written in Baba's hand. I can show that if you want to see it. Oops. This letter in Baba's hand, and there's a translation for it here, or a transcription, I guess you call it. So there was a good deal of letters exchanged between um, Dr. Ghani and Baba. Will you show it? Yeah. Can you see it? No. It's on the screen. No, I have the words that you were reading on the screen. This is the transcription of one that I wanted to show you. Oh, wait, that's not the one I wanted to show you. <laughs> it must be this one. Here it is. This is the one I wanted to show you. Uh, at some point, Dr. Ramju, who was also with Dr. in Pune, or in a novel, I'm sorry, at the time, uh, came down with a fever. So this is January 14th, 1924. Cassandra, am I, am I supposed to be seeing the letter on the screen? Cassandra, I think you have your browser window only shared, but not your whole desktop. So we're not seeing the window that that's coming up in. Good point. Thank you. It's not showing me the option there. Mm -hmm. You see it now? Yeah. I mean, is it blue? I see, or? I see it typed. Was it a yeah. type? Yeah. yeah. So let me, yeah. So this is the original. Let me do this again for you. Part one. <laughs> These are, this is a series of his letters. I'm just going to read you one of them for now because I think it applies to this particular time in the text. And I found it very interesting when I when I read this. So that's, this is, Bob, that's Baba's handwriting. Yeah, that was Baba's handwriting. Um, when ba when Baba yeah when Bailey came to Lanavla to see Ramju, who was suffering from fever, so that's when this was written and hand delivered by Bailey to Doctor Ghani, and it said, "Dear Doctor, let me increase the <laughs> type on this. I'm sure you can't see it. There you go." I can't understand your always imagining my indifference to you. For God's sake, do not enter your old mood. Be fresh with hopes, however vague they may seem to you. Although the destination is not visible, don't be disheartened, for there is never a road which has to end. That's translated from the Persian script. Never for a moment think that I will ever forget you and the work that I am bent upon for you. Though you have not understood me up to now, a day will come when you will thoroughly understand your greatest friend in this world. This fever and delirium of Ramju has caused me great anxiety. Tell him to not worry much about trifle lafras, which means botherations. Please convey to him my message. I'll call you to me shortly. So this was in 1924, and it was to be another six or seven years, I think, before they actually returned, before Dr. Ghani, at least, returned to Baba's side. And we'll read about that in the book. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the book. So the last line we, went, uh, we read was um, how, how Dr. Ghani was being kept wondering as to when and where it would end. Or Mandalay were wondering. The lone expected intervention by Meher Baba in the affairs of Dr. Ghani did materialize. The master at this stage went in person to see him at Nonavla and bade him sever all connections with worldly activities. 
The experiment, for whatever it was worth, was enough for the disciple himself, who emerged therefrom very chastened and sober in his outlook on life. And the master, too, <laughs> thought it was high time to reclaim him once again for inscrutable reasons of his own. Thus, the year 1936 sees Dr. Ghani once again beating an honorable retreat from worldly life and its commitments. And since then, he is serving the cause of the master inspired by his personal example in the matter. Dr. Ghani has traveled extensively with Meher Baba in India and participated in his journeys on foot, notably those from Pune to Bombay and Bombay to Sakuri. He was one of the party to accompany Meher Baba in his much advertised second visit to England, Europe, and America in the year 1932, and was to all intents and purposes during this trip the spokesman of the party towards Westerners who could not have long enough contacts with the master due to pressure of engagements as well as his silence. Dr. Ghani, Dr. Ghani's intellectual parts, his ready witticism, his uncanny memory for extensive Persian and Urdu poetry, and his knowledge of Sufi literature are very much appreciated by the master, who very often takes delight in introducing the friend of his childhood to newcomers by recalling these outstanding traits in him. All right, my mouth is dry. Does anybody want to read? Rosalie, do you mind reading for a little bit? I'll, I'll read for a little bit. The spiritual contact with the master aroused in Dr. Ghani the consciousness of poetical possibilities latent in him. Under the pen name Munsif, he has, to, he has, to his credit, a good many poems in the Urdu language. The high tone and standard of philosophical thought running through them have been greatly appreciated at the poetical conferences, which he has had the honor to preside in Pune district and Amanagar. Dr. Ghani has been a consistent contributor to the pages of the Spiritual Monthly, Meher Baba Journal, and his specialty lies in the presentation of Meher Baba's philosophy and teachings in the light of Sufistic Gnosis, with which he is no doubt authoritatively conversant. He has been associated with the conduct of the Mayor Baba Journal since its inception two years ago at Maribad, Amanagar. And today he is at Bangalore in charge of the publication as managing editor. I didn't know that. That was re reproduced from the Mayor Baba Journal 1938 to 1942. <laughs> Reminiscences regarding the author. I have come to awaken people to the one God, one humanity, one brotherhood, Meher Baba. The Vedantic conception of oneness of God, oneness of religion, and oneness of humanity unfolded by Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa and broadcast to the world by his worthy disciple, Swami Vivekananda, awakened the enlightened section of human society to a new awareness of values, clearer vision of true human relations based on the conception of oneness of all religions, sustained by the one God who is indivisible existence, infinite and eternal. This new awareness widened the horizons of international understanding. But in India, Vedanta, which in fact was an epic 
indicating the end of Vedic conception of religious life, when a new cycle of true values of life began basing on the F basing on the essence of Vedic outlook on life, the Upanishads remained Hindu. The Vedantic conception of life was caged in the Hindu cell for all practical purposes. Similarly, the Sufi conception of spiritual values of life, the essence of Semitic religious conception of life was caged in the Islam cell for all practical purposes. In the West, small groups of spiritually inclined persons appeared to have been receptive to both the conceptions and endeavored to experiment on these new visions of life. Thus, the way can be said to have been laid in the West for Meher Baba's advent for his avataric work of awakening the world to the new dispensation of the most ancient truth. People in the West are blessed in the sense that they are not burdened with age old religious traditions, faiths, and beliefs which are but husks of true spiritual values of life imparted by perfect masters and the avatar from time immemorial. In the East, particularly in India, which incidentally has become a home for all religious communities of the world, Muslims and Christians are most sectarian in their religious outlook. Meher Baba thus has the largest following amongst the Hindus. Though reverence has been evinced by large number of people from both the Muslim and Christian communities, I know only of a few families who have been deeply and consistently devoted to Baba. Ramjus and Ghanis are the earliest Muslim families wholly devoted to Meher Baba in Pune. Liberal education and experience from personal contact have drawn them to Baba. There was a band of young men and women in Pune well informed about the avatar, his advent, life and activities. To be amongst them was to meditate on Meher Baba. Incidences from the life of Baba and his disciples were favorite subjects of discussion when they came together. Dr. Ghani was a loving and inspiring guide to these young and enthusiastic group of lovers who formed the nucleus for the activities for the cause of Meher Baba in Pune and the suburbs. They are the unconscious originators of Avatar Meher Baba Pune Center, an unmatchably well-equipped institution today to impart information about the avatar and the significance of avataric advent and function. Pratap G. Ahir, a member of this group, recounts his reminiscences regarding Dr. Ghani. Okay, um, I want to pause here and uh, go just go over a few things. So now we've been through most of the preparatory stuff of the book, right, which sort of sets things up. And now we go into um, uh, Pratap Ahir's stories about Ghani. And this will go on to about page 28. And then it picks up with Dr. Ghani's actual writings, which were taken from the Meher Baba journal. And um, the stories are very interesting, but I wanted to make sure that if anybody here has something they would like to contribute about Dr. Ghani or talk about, 
that you get a chance to interject that. Because when we start reading through um, this stuff by uh, 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 Pratap, we might want to just continue right through that without too much discussion. It's just simply statement, statements by him of what happened in his uh, association. So is there anything well, everybody wants to tell us about Dr. Ghani? Yeah, and Baba actually said about Dr. Ghani that he had the perfect blending of wit and wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I would get a lot out of Pratops. He would, he talked for weeks about him. I mean, mm. once a week, you know, and I was trying to, I got very, very interested because of the humor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I missed those. And, I'm going to have to go back and watch them. <laughs> yeah, and then one other thing he said, uh, uh, Dr. Ghani died August 7th of 1951. And Baba said it was one of his greatest losses in mm. the new life. Yeah. That's quite a statement. <laughs> Thank you, Rosalie. Greg. Um, so I'll, I'll just mention that when Gunny did die, um, Baba, you know, had, you, you may all know this already, but anyway, Baba had given him lots of dictations toward uh, producing God Speaks. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, as he, he said that his plan was to have Gunny write God Speaks, um, but that obviously died with, uh, with Gunny. So yeah. then so all of those writings that Gunny did eventually um, were recovered when it came time to actually do God Speaks. But then Baba looked at him and, and said that he had only uh, written about half of what Baba had dictated and, and sort of gone off on some other things. So anyway, all of that got sent to Don and uh, Ivy Deuce and became the supplement to God Speaks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, uh, Greg, did you know that some of some new stuff has, was found about three years ago? Oh. In a storage room. And I actually have some video, I can send you a link to my playlist on that, some videos that Ward made in Australia uh -huh. is, is an early reading of those manuscripts. They actually read it together and are speculating together. It's fascinating stuff. So is it, is it um, more it's of his, the God Speaks material? Yep. yep. Oh. Yeah, stuff that's, stuff that's not even in the uh, supplement. Oh. So, so did, uh, was there any comment about whether it was more on target with what Baba had hoped he would write up or did? Well, yeah, it, it's, it's questionable. So remember, this was simply a first reading. But the interesting thing about it, Greg, is uh, the pages they found were actually edited by Dr. Duncan. And it contains his comments on the text, which I found fascinating because he really takes Dr. Gunny to task for not following Baba's descriptions or prescriptions, that right? That sound pretty juicy. Yeah, and then and the other thing is, you know, uh, Dr. Gunny was a, a very intelligent fellow. He, he had like a photographic mind and he read everything he could get his hands on, on Islam and, and uh, um, Sufism and Vedantism. And he was more concerned about those things being elucidated in light of Baba's teachings, I think. This is my interpretation. Don't, don't take me at my word. Than he was in providing any new insights into things. He, in other words, he had this uh, personal vendetta <laughs> against them for mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the things that were being practiced in those religions. And he wanted them to come together like beads on one string under Mayor Baba's guidance. And he was very much committed to that. You know, it's so interesting also that, so here's this work with Ghani at the beginning of God Speaks that mm -hmm. um, 
apparently came to nothing. Of course, nothing ever comes to nothing. But anyway, it didn't come to a full version of God Speaks. Mm -hmm. And then there was um, that commission that Baba gave to Francis to rewrite God Speaks, yep. which never happened because Francis died first. So it's right. there's some mm -hmm. Bob's doing something funny around God Speaks with all of that. Yeah, and I find it very fascinating because each one of them takes sort of a different uh, emphasis, not so much the material, but the emphasis seems to shift. Right. And I haven't uh, seen anything of, uh, of uh, Francis's writings about that, have you? Um, I don't think he actually, there, as I recall, he did make some notes. He had some point. Oh, I, I remember. I saw there was a page where there were points that Baba had given him that he felt were inadequately addressed mm -hmm. and that he wanted him to address. And then I remember there was a comment by Baba that the description of the fourth plane was a mess. And yeah, he, right. Um, yeah. Cleaned up. But I don't think Francis uh, ever got very far with that project. You know, I go to these talks with uh, with Ward Parks on very, very early Sunday mornings, 3.30 right. in the morning, and I'll ask him if any of that has been found. I seem to recall something about that that stuff was uncovered in Australia, his notes, Francis's notes, <laughs> but I don't know if there's any intention of making that available or not. Yeah. Well, but anyway, it's pretty interesting, and, uh, you know, for me, having seen those videos with Ward, I don't think Ghani's vision of God Speaks would have flown, you know, because it did not have appeal for the masses, I think, the way God Speaks does in its current form. Uh -huh. You know, I don't think it gives a strong enough context of the divine plan and, you know, the divine theme, rather, and, and incarnation and reincarnation and evolution that um that you see in the book that we have now so interesting stuff yeah i'm, I'm sure it all worked out the way bob wanted it to absolutely yeah um but even even so i feel like uh, when i learned of the the commission that he had given francis to me, it kind of had the effect, and, and, you know, I wonder if it will have this effect more broadly on people. It had the effect of, it was, it was like Baba saying, don't get unnecessarily attached to the form of this text. Yes, um, I agree you know, with as, that. As so often happens, mm -hmm. um, and sort of leaving a little wiggle room, maybe for people to... Um, you know, go back to the book of the heart mm -hmm. as, as part of their interpretation of things. Yeah, I think we're just beginning to understand some of, it, some of this. You know, a lot of it has been languishing out there. And mm -hmm. uh, um, th there's a long way for us to go yet, but it is a fascinating and energizing journey for me. Ooh. So I'm going to mark this page as where we'll pick up next time. There we have another another event coming up with the discourses. But I wanted to thank all of you for coming and say that uh, there's a lot. It gets more and more interesting as we go along. So I hope you'll continue. Uh, these are recorded. I'm going to stop the recording right now. And they will be posted on the Baba Zoom events page or recordings page. Oh, great. Well,